Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1138. If you want to download this workbook 1138 to 1140, click on the link below the video. In this video, we just want to do a basic future value calculation. Now here's the deal. We might have $2,000, and we put it into a bank account for 25 years. The contract says we get 3% a year, but it's compounded 12 times a year. And our goal is to calculate the future value. Yeah, what is this going to be worth in 25 years? We'll see two ways. That right there, the FE function, we can use. That's a built-in Excel function. Or we can use math. Now here's our variables. PV, that means present value. That means right now, today, when we put it in the bank, how much is it worth? Well, the present value is 2000 bucks. The annual interest rate, or APR, is 3%. We'll use our little i for math. Compounding periods per year, n for our math formula, 12 times once a month. Once every month, they drop some more interest in compounding it. We love that. Years, x is for our math formula, 25 years. We're going to leave that in there. The period rate. That is determined, of course, annual divided by number of periods a year, i divided by n, or in the Excel future value function, it's called rate. Now, it just says rate, so sometimes you might think, oh, it's the annual rate. Uh -uh -uh. It's the period rate. That will be 3% divided by 12. Total number of periods in our math, it's years times number of compounding periods per year in future value function, it's NPER for number of periods. Future value is FV. All right, if we're going to use our future value function, we of course could take 3% divided by 12 and just put it into our future value. But a lot of times, it's nice to see on the face of the spreadsheet what that monthly rate is. So I'm going to say equal sign. I'm using my arrow keys, 1, 2, 3. To the left, that's going to be the annual rate divided by one, two cells to my left. Tab. So 0.25%. NPER, total number of periods equals, I'm going to go arrow, arrow times arrow, arrow, arrow. 25 times 12, tab. Now we can do our future value equals future value. Tab, the rate, tab, tab, comma, NPER, sorry, did I say tab? I meant arrow. Arrow key, that's going to be our NPER. Comma, we don't have any monthly payments going in. This is one lump sum, so we skip over that argument. We just type a comma that tells the future value function that we've skipped it, but now it wants present value. Now, you got to know a little bit about cash flow when you're using financial functions in Excel. And the thing is that present value, we have to know the direction of cash flow. Now think about this. This is your money, so it's like yours. It's a plus, but uh-uh-uh. When you put this $2,000 in the bank, it comes out of your purse or wallet and into the bank. So it's like it's going out of your wallet or purse. That means the direction is negative away from you. So I'm going to have to type a negative and then click on that 2000 Future value function, all the, the finance functions all understand cash flow, so you got to do the right sign. Our math formulas, we won't have to worry about that. That's it. Close parentheses and tab. We're going to get 4,234 cents. Interest, of course, is, hey, the end amount minus the begin amount or future value minus present value. And there we have it. If we are doing it with math, we would say equals the present value. And then we need to figure out the present value factor. In the way old days, you have to you used to have to look this up, but no way. Times, in parentheses, 1 plus. We've already calculated our n divided by i, so there it is. Close parentheses. And we're going to raise it with an exponent. That's caret shift 6. And now I'm going to click on my 300 periods. Enter. It'll give us the exact same thing. Well, what did I do there? I did something wrong. Oh, look at that. I typed an 8 instead of my multiplication symbol. I have a hard time using one of my hands, so I, I'm going to use only one hand here, I'm going to use the asterisk on the number pad, Enter. It'll give me the same exact thing up there. 
wait a second, it doesn't look like the same thing. Don't forget, if you click on that cell, go to home, and look there, it's got a number formatting. We know that number formatting is a facade. It just shows us 0 0.04. These underlying decimals here are actually in the cell. They're just disguised by this number format. If I were to increase the decimal buttons up here in the number group, we could see that it's exactly the same number. Now I'm going to decrease them back. Similarly, I could click on this cell and now go to the drop down and say currency. All right, that's a little bit about basic future value functions using the FV function and the math formula. In our next two videos, we're going to use the same example, but we're going to use, learn something really cool about defined names. And then in 140, we're going to see how to create a dynamic label. So if I were to change this to 12%, this label up here automatically changes, including monthly. All right, we'll see you next video.